Hello everybody! Ignore the penises on the wall. I have writing ticks. Haven't sorted that yet. Um, they write on walls. Today I'm making a video discussing some apps that can help with your mental well-being. I am making this video because I thought that it's helpful for people to just have something on their phone that they can check in with every now and then and that can help them feel better but I do need to say that looking after your mental well-being does take a lot more than an app. It takes, like, if you have a mental illness, looking for the root causes of that, whether that's uh, trauma causing it or something that's physical like an underlying infection, food sensitivities, um, gut microbiome imbalances etc and it takes changing certain life situations as well if you can. It takes a lot more than just an app. The app isn't intended as a substitute for treatment um, but it's just something that can help people manage and as well as this my views on these apps again they are just my own views people are going to have different experiences so just bear that in mind as i am reviewing these the first app is clear fear by stem4 clear fear is an app that's intended to help people manage anxiety and it's got quite a formal professional layout so it looks like the sort of thing a therapist might recommend to their patients the clear fear app has the option to create your own safety net which is a page where it includes things you can do and people you can call if you are in need of immediate help. I like the Clear Fear app because it's very versatile. It has many different options on there of things you can do to manage your anxiety. It doesn't just serve one purpose. So, for example, you can look at a page where it lists inspirational people and has a quote from these people that's celebrities who have dealt with anxiety and stuff. There's also a page where you can just look at inspirational statements and quotes in general and reminders that can help you feel more comfortable and fight your anxiety and overcome it. And it also contains a part where you can sort of just do a thought dump and put your worries down. It contains a part where you can put your worry down and then think of a solution to it and then think, like, did that solution work, for example? If you're worried about beans, um, what you're going to say to someone, you could prep the solution to rehearse it. So I think it's very good for inspiring you and motivating you and allowing you to know that you can get better and also helping you be more solution focused. It also has quite a funny section where it lists jokes because laughter and humour can sometimes help you cope with anxiety and I find it very funny. I mean, the jokes, they're like dad jokes. They're actually funny because they're not that funny. No offence to whoever made the app, that's just what I found. Um, but there's also a part where it shows you GIFs and you're supposed to smile at them. The GIFs can be quite funny, but it says that even if a GIF is upsetting to you, you should smile anyway. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, the GIFs, the GIFs bit's quite funny and I guess that can sort of help as a form of distraction. It also has a part where you can learn about the types of anxiety. So I, for example, went on it and clicked obsessive compulsive disorder because I used to have severe OCD. So I clicked on that and it sort of tells you a bit about the symptoms and what it is. And just very briefly, but then it says like what helps with it. It says what helps with it is exposure and resisting the rituals, which is really what you do in ERP slash sometimes CBT. But it also lists different types of anxiety so you don't have to click on OCD obviously I just clicked on that because that's what I had experience with but it also lists a generalized anxiety, social anxiety, performance anxiety, exam anxiety, separation anxiety, phobias and fear of missing out um, and then there's a section of OCD and health anxiety which is what I clicked on to take a look at that but it's sort of helpful for a variety of different types of anxiety. I can tell that the app encourages you to face your fear uh, to help you overcome it. The app also contains um, access to breathing exercises that you can do when you're feeling very anxious, but also mindfulness exercises. So you can focus on that as well and take your mind away from whatever is going on in there. 
The app also contains a couple of numbers that may be helpful for further support. So when I went on there, it went uh, to include the child line number, which isn't actually helpful to me because I'm an adult, but I don't need it anyway, thankfully, I'm all good. But it contains that and also the NHS 111 number for uh, physical health needs as well. Um, I think it would be awesome if it contained numbers to anxiety helplines and maybe it does maybe i just didn't see that but that would be pretty cool if it did this app contains loads of different features and you can select what specifically you want help with so you can select that you want help with dealing with your emotions managing your worries or reacting to your worries so it's not just one thing that it can help with it can also it also has the option to help with managing your physical responses to anxiety if the physical traits of it are the problem for you and cause a lot of discomfort. It really helps you look after your overall well-being because when you select the option of um, managing the physical responses to anxiety, it sort of helps you set goals to sleep well, eat well, and do exercise and take time to relax and you can set yourself goals on those things so that you can look after yourself more and keep developing in that way so you become healthier and in turn your anxiety should hopefully get a little bit better it lets you set goals about your diet which i mean may not be good if you have an eating disorder people could use it in a negative way in that sense but if you find that certain foods make your anxiety worse caffeine for example then you could remember to set a goal to avoid that and hope that it helps. It has a page where it can suggest methods to help you express your emotions and reduce your anxiety. It's really the kind of activities you might do in a therapy session or a group session, which I thought was very cool to have access to those sorts of management ideas in an app. Um, one of the ideas which I thought was pretty cool was to make a clay version of the anxiety and then squish it up and make it into a brave version of yourself. That was quite cool. And then another idea that was on the app was to think about a person who makes you feel calm and then think about your fear and what they would say about your fear. An app, of course, isn't a substitute for therapy, but I know, again, that not everyone has access to any sort of therapy. So if a person doesn't have access to it, they may have to, like, try and find ways like this to manage. In some ways it can also, I think, help with reducing OCD rituals because you can set goals on ways that you can stop reacting to the anxiety, such as like setting a goal to only touch the coffee table three times rather than 20 times, or setting a goal to not wash your hands after touching something. Those are the sorts of goals that you can set yourself in the app so it may encourage someone to overcome OCD potentially as well. I think I would rate this app 10 out of 10 because it just has so many different features and the organisation STEM4 that makes it, this isn't the only app that they make, they also um, make other apps such as Combined Minds and the Combined Minds app <clears throat> is one that can help people deal with uh, low mood, anxiety, eating disorders, digital addiction and self-harm so that app pretty much encompasses a lot of different things and then there's move mood which helps people manage low mood there's also um calm harm which is an app intended to help people reduce self-harm so the organization creates a lot of different apps but this is just one that i specifically looked at for this video the next app that i'm going to be talking about is finch now finch is absolutely adorable um it's an app that has very adorable cartoon graphics and it's an app where you sort of adopt this creature like a bird and you can name it. I went with the automatic name it gave there, which is Baby Tuba. Um, but you can name it anything you'd like. And you sort, of, you sort of nurture this little creature and it can go on adventures and then it'll come back and tell you something that it found out. And you can select an option of how to react to what they found out and help it grow and nurture it and everything. Um, which is very very adorable and very very sweet. After reviewing the apps for this video I deleted like most of the apps, like all of the apps except for uh, the ones I had before and Finch because I couldn't delete Finch. Finch was too adorable but um, I would also, I would rate this 9 out of 10 
because it does have a lot of different features um but you can't really like scroll through a bunch of features and choose what activity you want to do unless you pay um you don't have all the features unless you pay and i haven't paid so it is limited access if you don't have the funds to pay for the full version of the app but it is very cute it has an option of listening to soundscapes um like things like rain and breezes and stuff and that can be quite relaxing for some people but then again you could get the same soundscapes on youtube um but also what i really like about this app is that it sort of gives journal prompts so again you can only like refresh the journal prompt and get a different one if you don't like the one that's automatically given you can't refresh it and get a new one unless you pay but you can still get the journal prompts and it'll ask you something like what is something that made you smile today for example and you can just type in uh bullet points and the more that you write the more um there's a little lightning strike in the corner and the more that will grow up and go up and the more that will energize um your little creature so it kind of motivates you to write more positive things write more that you're grateful for the app also contains some quizzes um one i took was the body appreciation quiz and this was quite enlightening because it's not just about body image it's about how you genuinely appreciate what your body has the physical ability to do and it made me realize that i do dwell too much on the fact that i experience muscle weakness and muscle fatigue um, and I wasn't appreciating what my body could do because I was getting so caught up in what it struggled to do, which is completely understandable because being a 19 year old who has episodes of muscle weakness and muscle fat fatigue can be quite frustrating, but it definitely helped me focus on the positive more and realize that I'm still really lucky because I can still move about and stuff, sometimes less than I may want to, but I can still function. I can still pick up a glass and drink and stuff. So it definitely sort of reset me in that way to be more grateful and focus on what I can do despite the fact that I do still tr struggle with things physically sometimes. But yes, th those quiz can, quizzes can be quite enlightening as well. The app also contains the option of doing breathing exercises, which again, some people find that it helps them manage anxiety and sort of calms the whole nervous system. So some people may find that helpful as well. Every time you open up the Finch app, it comes up with a positive, uplifting quote and it comes up with a bit at the bottom saying how are you feeling and then it has different emotional faces at the bottom and you click on the one that correlates to how you're feeling and this can definitely help you become more in tune with your emotions and i think it's absolutely adorable because there are notifications that you get on your phone that say um for, for me it's like baby tuba is feeling relaxed how are you feeling so it's quite cute and reminds you to check in with how you're actually feeling and listen to that the app also allows you to set goals for the day or the next day if you go on to it at night, it's, it knows the time. Um, but that's very, very good because it helps you feel motivated and helps you get things done. Well, I say that didn't for me, I actually, it, gives you, it does also give you the option to snooze a goal and set it to the next day. So it doesn't always motivate you, but can still help you keep track of what you need to do and for some people it may motivate them a bit more than it motivated me <laughs> the app is also really sweet in that if you don't know what you're doing with the day you can look at sort of suggestions and ideas and there is a section for ideas of what to do on a very bad day where you're struggling and it's really sweet because it's things like um literally survive the day it could be your goal for the day or go up to the mirror and tell yourself that you can do it or um step outside just once and it's very sweet it's it's very nice and that can definitely give people ideas of what to do when they're having a really bad day um and just take those little steps that can actually mean a lot as i said the clear fear app was one that had a very formal layout but finch is just a very fun and cute layout so can be less professional or formal looking so it can seem more like something fun to do than something that's like a chore. Free CBT. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. It's a free CBT app. Um, now free CBT, what you do is you type in an automatic thought. So that could be just a worry or just a very negative thought that automatically comes into your mind. You don't choose to think it, but it could be something that's getting you down. And you could then select the thought distortions that apply. So that could be catastrophizing <laughs> that is not how you say it 
catastrophize. I know what I'm trying to say. It's where you think of the worst case scenario. Um, there's also fortune telling where you feel like something bad in the future may happen when it may not. And also mind reading where you assume that someone's thinking something about you. Um, it has a bit, if you click a question mark in the corner, it will tell you what the thought distortions are so you can learn about them and then apply them to your own thoughts. Um, and then it takes you on to challenge the thought. You have to challenge your thought and say why it may not actually be true. And then at the end, you write an alternative thought, which is a more positive thought, which is what you try to cement into your mind and integrate into your mind. So hopefully you'll start thinking that automatically. Quite a simple app, but definitely serves a good purpose and can motivate you to do CBT on yourself. If well, obviously all with the help of a therapist. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. And it gives people the motivation to actually work on it because if someone says to me that I'd have to just write every time to do something like that, I wouldn't because to me handwriting is actually a, a challenge sometimes. Like handwriting, I don't have the motivation to do things that take that because my handwriting is absolutely terrible. So having on on an app that you can easily just type things on, uh, it already asks you the questions in place and just easily gives you the option to select the thought distortions that apply. I think that's very helpful. Now, the free CBT app isn't going to help everyone who's feeling down because for some people they might feel down or anxious without an underlying thought, without any reason. It can just be a feeling and in those cases, you know, challenging the thoughts may not work because there may not be any thoughts really causing it. But for people who struggle with thinking about themselves in a negative way or worrying a lot, it can definitely help to challenge those thoughts and think in a different sort of way. And that doesn't mean that you're bad for thinking in a certain way because obviously the thoughts are automatic. It's the symptom of a mental health struggle. Um, you don't need to judge yourself for that and challenge, challenging the thought doesn't mean that you did anything wrong by thinking it. It's just you challenge the thought simply so that you can have a better quality of life because you deserve a better quality of life. Overall, I would rate the free CBT app 9 out of 10 because it can be very helpful. Anti-stress relaxation toys. This is an app that it's simple yet it has a lot of options and what to do. So you scroll down and there's so many options that you can click on of little mini games to play. For example, there's one where you can sort of draw on a window that has condensation, write on a chalkboard, um, squish a squishy ball through the squee the screen through the screen, <laughs> um, play with a fidget spinner, chop up a carrot that there's very simple mini games loads of them but i guess they can help with mindfulness for some people like if you're really stressing out and you just need to focus on something really simple it could help to do something like that there's tiny little mindful games and also i don't know how many other people have this but sometimes you just have no motivation to do anything at all you literally can't focus on anything and you don't know what to do with yourself um, so I would say these games are so simple and they at least give you something to do so you're not like mind numbingly bored but if you don't have the motivation to do much else then the mini games may just keep you entertained for a little amount of time. So yeah there's, there's there is quite a lot of them like if I included all of them in this video it would be really long so I do like that there's the option to do whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to rate 5 out of 10. I do like the mini games in that. Um, but I would say that only some of them take so much focus that you're actually going to be distracted from other things. I feel like as well, because it's supposed to be anti-stress, but the problem is it does feel very unproductive when you're playing the games. And some people, when they're stressed, they don't like feeling unproductive. That actually makes them more stressed because they feel like they're just wasting their time. So I'm not sure that this would help everyone, but I guess some of the games are quite cool. My favourite mini game on it was actually a music one where you would use your fingers and put the volume up and keep clicking on different frequencies, different notes, and you made your own mini song with that. Um, that was quite sweet. Um, but there's also sort of playing with fidget tools in the game. So there's like a fidget popper mini game where you just tap it and it goes in and then there's a bubble. Uh, a bubble wrap popping game and um, they're very simple but 
I guess they do help some people be quite mindful. The most, the one which took the most focus, which I saw, which could help if you need something that really focuses your mind, was a number game where there were blocks and each block had a number on and you had to try to order them, but you had to kind of slide them and try and make them fit because there's only one blank spot, but you still had to try and get them in order. It took a lot of focus and I didn't finish it, but <laughs> that can help if you need something that does take a lot of focus to distract you from something um but it could just be frustrating for some people if they can't finish it but i think this app's pretty sweet um doesn't necessarily help you challenge your thoughts or anything but it's more of a distraction app the next one i'm going to be talking about is med circle now med circle i believe you you can get an app for it i didn't use the app i just used the website but i believe you can get an app for it it is a mental health video platform so they will interview doctors and therapists and some people with lived experiences with certain conditions and certain struggles and you can sort of learn from that i personally like listening to people's lived experiences more than i li like listening to doctors and therapists and that's just because with a doctor and therapist they can give you a basic overview of what the condition is the diagnostic criteria some common ways which it affects people and maybe the management and treatment but when you speak and listen to someone who actually has lived with it you can see how complex it is and how different it actually is for every person and how you're not going to know everything about a condition just from reading the diagnostic criteria um, or just from having a basic overview of the common ways which it affects people because it affects every single aspect of a person's life beyond uh beyond what the medical establishment may focus on it can literally affect everything um because it's how we live so i personally do like the interviews of people who have lived experience i watched one which was where they were interviewing a man with bipolar disorder and it was very fascinating to hear how it affected him and his relationships and everything like that and it was interesting to hear his story and it was also interesting to hear how he feels like he could go off medication potentially because he had Lyme disease and he knows that Lyme disease can have an impact on mental health and things like that. You know, it was very fascinating. Um, so that could be good for some people who need to listen to people who have similar experiences to them to relate to or to get an overview of some common mental health conditions. I wish that they would be able to cover pans and pandas one day. Pans and pandas aren't mental health conditions but they can cause mental health symptoms and they are very commonly misdiagnosed as mental illnesses. So it would be absolutely amazing if they could cover pans and pandas on there one day. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's quite good. However, it is something that you need to pay for. You need a, a, a prescription, a subscription for, you need to pay for a subscription. I'm quite lucky that when I had MedCircle, it was actually paid for by my friend who runs a wellbeing organisation called The Legacy. Their website is um, something like www.freeyouthsupport.com, but I will have to double check that. But the link should be in the description. They were very kind and used the funds to pay for me to have this subscription. And that was very sweet of them. So I think the information on MedCircle is very thorough. But if you can't afford it, then that's valid and that's okay because... There, there are other options like on youtube there are countless videos about mental well-being and mental health um that may contain similar content to the med circle content so it's not the end of the world if you can't afford it um of course and med circle do also have a youtube channel where they do offer free videos so just because um you may not be able to access videos on the app doesn't mean you can't get help from them because they do have a youtube channel as well and some of the stuff on their youtube channel is really really good um, I watched some of their videos. I watched an interview with Lele Pons about her OCD. That, I didn't relate to that. It's so strange, I have to say. I don't relate to a lot of the OCD community. But anyway, um, also, they were you. They, they kind of made a mini documentary series of the presenter of Med Circle getting, I think it was ketamine infusions for their depression. Very fascinating, I have to say. So the, they do have a YouTube channel as well, so you don't necessarily need the app. Um, but for the extra content it can help to get a subscription if you can and then use that um but there are countless mental health series on youtube anyway so you could watch people on youtube as well or instead of i think that i'm going to give med circle a 7 out of 10 because i think 
that the information is very thorough they cover many different conditions and i love that they invite people with lived experience on there and i do find certain videos extremely fascinating such as their video where their presenter went to get ketamine treatment it's very fascinating this is one of my stims i was going to cut this out of the video but i don't get my stims on camera so much so here we go worry dolls now the worry dolls app is very sweet and quite simple but but very sweet and can be very helpful there's a bun well it starts off with one but there's a worry doll on the screen you tell it what to worry you put your worry onto it and let your worry go it will worry it for you you can add as many as you need you can add multiple worry worry dolls one will come up on the screen and say should i worry and you can tell it your worry and then you can tell it anything you can um click that you want to tell the doll something then tell it something and it will say okay um something like thanks for telling me that and so you can just get your worries off your chest into that app and then once you click to end the worry it will ask you if the worry ended up being as bad as you thought it would be and then you can also add in information about how the worry ended this can be quite helpful for people to get things off of their chest and to see how often their worries are actually as bad as the outcome actually is like if their worries are excessive if their worries are realistic or not and it can also help you understand how your worry usually ends i think i would rate this app a seven out of ten it's quite simple but very sweet and very easy to use and i don't think they have like advertisements on it either which is pretty good sparkle <laughs> the sparkle app is based on becoming more aware of things that make you feel good and trying to integrate them into your life more and more so the sparkles are the things that make you feel good that's why the app is called sparkle that's the premise that it works off and you type in the things you love and say why you love it and how it makes you feel and then Every day it'll ask you, have you practiced self-care today? You say yes or no. If you click no, it will ask you what you can learn from today. And if you click yes, it'll ask what the sparkles in your life are that made you happy. And then for the how did it make you feel bit, there's a slider bar from a sad emoji to a happy one. And you identify how you feel based on that. And it can help you sort of become, again, more in tune to what makes you feel good, more in tune with your feelings and identifying facial expressions as well potentially um and it gives you set timings where you say when do you next want to check in so you can check in regularly and focus on your well-being more focus on the things that make you happy and keep getting that reminder to care for yourself and do things that make you happy rather than overworking yourself so that can be quite helpful for some people to have that sort of app just to remind them to do things that make them happy more and to keep track of what actually does make them happy and remind people that there are things in life that make them feel good. I think I would rate the Sparkle app 6 out of 10 because it isn't like a massive app, it doesn't have loads of features or anything, but for some reason I just love the word sparkles and I just love referring to the things that make us happy as sparkles and to create a more positive life I definitely think that it does make sense to try and include more sparkles into our life and then I guess we definitely feel better in ourselves. There is also an app, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it but I think it's Tochi Diary. It's basically a mood diary but you can also use it for other things as well like tracking your diet. So when you start your Tochi Diary you can customise it a little bit. It's an orb with a sort of hedgehog creature on the top is the main image that you see. You can customise the colours of that and then also customise your journal to your needs so you can improve your diet and eating habits, record your exercise and progress or understand yourself and manage stress. Um, so it can also, it's used as a mood diary or a diet diary or an exercise diary or multiple of those. I, for this exercise, selected the option of diet and mood diary thing. But it's important to note that Again, if you have an eating disorder, probably not going to be helpful, especially not if you choose the exercise and diet options, because that may actually feed your eating disorder a lot and people may use it to actually progress their eating disorder. So it needs to be used responsibly and with the right intentions. Um, but, you know, if 
your eating disorder is very strong and um, you don't feel like you'll necessarily have control of how you use it, it's probably best to just get an app that doesn't have the option to track your diet and exercise and simply, if you need a mood diary, just have a mood diary. This app is quite sweet because it does help you become aware again, similar to the Sparkle app, of the things that make you feel good and the things that make you feel bad as well because you can add tags to how you feel. So you enter your mood and then select tags. The tags are customizable you can customize them to the things you commonly do so you can add a tag for work you can add a tag for talking to my friends you can add a tag for going for a bike ride for example and then when you put in your mood you select the things that you were doing uh, at the time the things that made you feel that way and it will help you keep track of that it will give you a breakdown and associate the things over time that seem to have been more correlated with the positive moods and more negative moods so you can try and avoid things, if possible, that trigger the negative moods and increase what makes you feel more positive. So it definitely makes you more aware of how things are affecting your emotions. And it will also just help you track your emotions and see how you're doing on a given day and help you find patterns because it can give you a weekly breakdown of how you've been feeling. If you know that you have certain trigger foods which make your brain functioning worse, if you're like me, uh, definitely food sensitivities affect my brain an awful lot. Um, I feel like the diet option may potentially help motivate you to stay on track with mainly eating the things that are good for your well-being and not your trigger foods um, because the app when you pet in a food you select whether it's a healthy food normal neutral or junk food again for some people this would not be a good thing if you're very obsessive about food that's not going to be a good thing but if you're not obsessive about food and if it's simply you're using it to try and create healthier methods and try to avoid trigger foods which you've seen make your well-being worse then if it's trigger food like a food sensitivity that you're struggling to keep out of your diet then you can say junk food and then over time try and increase it more and more to the the, the healthy foods which aren't your trigger foods one thing that i really like about the tochi app is that you actually don't have to log in you can go in as a guest and i like that because anytime like almost any time that there's an app where I have to log in, I don't like it unless it's a social media. But for some reason, if it's a self-care app, I don't like logging in. Um, but I think the Toshi Diary is quite good in that you don't actually have to create an account. Um, with Toshi Diary as well, I like how there's a mood library. And if you click on your feelings like happy, then it will tell you the tags that are, have been associated with happiness. Amazing. It will tell you what you have tagged associated with the times when you have felt amazing uh sad it will show you the tags that you have associated with sadness so it makes you more self-aware and you can even include tags of the weather so if your moods are influenced by the weather then you can see that and you can kind of track and find out if your moods are like influenced by the weather because it will help you become more self-aware of what makes you feel a certain way. It's possible for you to even add tags for certain foods um, and maybe see how the food you eat are affecting your emotions on a given day. Um, I must make the point that with food sensitivities that affect the brain, they're usually IgG, immunoglobulin G mediated, meaning that they are almost always delayed reactions um, rather than immediate reactions. So it can take hours sometimes even a day or more after consuming a trigger food for it to affect your brain but still maybe depending on whatever you eat in a day you can track how you are or if you have been advised to go on a, an elimination diet of some sort then you can track what you have cut out of your diet and how you are feeling seeing if you're feeling any different when you don't have a certain food or not you can also use it for that sort of thing with the tags and as well as that, you could maybe, if you're on a medication, use it to see if a medication is working to improve your mood. You could add a tag for that, um, like when you started a new medication, see if your mood is improving. I'm going to rate the Tochi Diary app 7 out of 10 because I do think it's good for finding correlations between what makes you feel a certain way in that and can help you find triggers. The last app I wanted to talk about is not specifically a mental health app, but it's Pinterest. Pinterest is not a mental health app or a mental wellbeing app. However, I know that some people can use it in ways that benefit their wellbeing because that's what I use it for a lot and that's what I used to use it for an awful lot. I used it for looking at positive affirmations and positive quotes. 
because you can get apps that are all about positive affirmations but i personally didn't see the point in getting a separate app to look at positive affirmations when pinterest you can just type in positive affirmations and it will come up with them so i didn't want to use up my phone storage to get another app for that when pinterest could already do it for me so i just use pinterest for that but of course if you struggle with having the sort of motivation to always look at positive things it really depends what you use it for you have to be mindful because if you search negative things on it then that's probably going to affect you negatively so if if you do struggle with that then having a separate app may help that won't let you like look up negative stuff but pinterest as long as it's used mindfully i would say it helped me so i'm sure it can help others as well looking at positive affirmations positive quotes and also art i just i i remember looking at art on it because there was a time when my brain was really inflamed i couldn't focus on reading stuff but i could just focus on looking at pretty images so that's what i did didn't actually end that well though because they ended up becoming mental ticks and keep they kept flashing up but um I, I i did like looking at art as a sort of distraction so maybe that could be good for some people as well this is going to make me sound like very out there but i have a very unique way of thinking when you download pinterest it's weird because it i think it had an image of like someone covering one eye and that's like an illuminati sort of sign but i'm sure that's nothing but i thought that was a bit weird but doesn't matter anyway um overall i would rate the pinterest app it depends what it's used for it's hard to rate but if it's only being used for like looking at positive quotes looking at uplifting things um making vision boards to inspire you um, for positive intentions then i would actually rate it 8 out of 10 because i do think it can be very helpful i hope that you enjoyed this video sorry if i've been rambling too much but hopefully maybe you will find some of these apps beneficial and if not just remember that there are countless other apps out there this is just the very tip of the iceberg there are so many apps out there that can help with mental well-being and there are apps designed for specific struggles as well so there are apps um specifically for ocd there are apps specifically focusing on dialect dialectical behavioral therapy can't even say that but things like bpd and stuff there are apps tailored to specific needs these ones that i've covered are more generalized but there are apps that can help you with what exactly you need help with so it can help to definitely look into that and there are multiple apps that also have the same sort of function so if you just don't like one of these but do want to try something similar then search for that as well because there will likely be an option but yes, um, again, another reminder, looking after your well-being does take a lot more than just an app. It takes looking after yourself in general, uh, potentially making lifestyle changes, um, potentially looking for underlying triggers like vitamin and mineral deficiencies, food sensitivities, underlying infections. Specifically, if you have pans pandas, then the infections will probably be playing a role, etc. So yes, but just on a daily basis, one little thing that you may be able to integrate into your life that may help you a little bit is something like an app. Um, so yes, thank you for watching this video and I hope it was helpful. Bye!